Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Janina Jeff, staff bioinformatics scientist here at Illumina, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Tracy Cole. Hello. Hello, it's nice to speak with you today. I'm the head of research at the N. Lorem Foundation. The N. Lorem Foundation. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that because the word foundation really sticks out to me. You and I have talked previously, and I know you do some drug discovery work, but I've never heard about it in a nonprofit yeah. world. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, and Lorem is a nonprofit foundation. Um, we are founded over two and a half years ago by Stanley Crook. So he founded Ionis or Isis Pharmaceuticals over 30 some years ago, um, really dedicated to understanding the basic science of antisense oligonucleotides and then seeing them through all the way through clinical trials. And so at Enlorem, we really have this incredible foundation that we get to work off of and um, incredible expertise um, from Stan and his experiences and his dedicated team at Ionis that really brought these therapies to the clinic for us to, to use now. So Ionis, was that a nonprofit too? No. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if you know, like, I'm just curious, yeah. I hear a foundation, drug discovery, drug, drug development, and you don't hear those two words together. You don't hear nonprofit and drug discovery together. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, if it, you know, tell me however much you want to share of like how that came to be. Yeah, so we really wanted to be able to help what we call um, patients that have nano rare mutations. And this is really patients that are have a genetic mutation that affects one to 30 people worldwide. And so in this case, um, there's really no commercial capability uh, for treatment for these patients. And so we knew that we had to be able to help provide that for our patients with a nonprofit model. We knew we never would try to make a profit from that. And so we really depend on incredible collaborations and partnerships and Ionis and uh, Biogen were, were founding members um, donors for our foundation and now we have an ever expanding um, corporate number of corporate partners and um, people that are corporations that help with in-kind donations and we're, we're ever expanding that so um, that, that's how we think we're able to um, continue with our nonprofit approach. That's amazing. Yeah. That's just warms my heart. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more, um, tell me a little bit more about some of the projects that you've, you've worked on. And also, if you could for a second before, can you tell me a little bit about the definition? You, you said yes. nano rare, yes. and I've never heard it described that yeah. way. So, uh, you know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, nano 10 to the negative nine. Yeah. All right, so yeah. what, is, what is nano rare? Yeah, that's awesome. So we actually coined that term okay. because um, in the ultra-rare disease space, it is a bit confusing. Um, essentially, ultra-rare diseases are considered to be less than one in 200,000 uh, worldwide. And so um, now that there's, there's so much interest um, from different drug companies and other foundations and, and trying to help these patients that have needs that really don't have commercial capabilities, now there are so many new terms, right? There's Ultra rare. <clears throat> there is micro rare, and now we have gone down to nano rare because you can't get any lower than one to thirty. And so we thought, what's the smallest word we could think of? And, and really, nano rare was, was kind of what we thought. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So now when I talk about really small things, yeah. I'm just kind of say, it's a nano problem. Yeah, yeah. See, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So you also mentioned another term, which yeah. was. Um, Antisense oligonucleotide. Yeah. Can you tell everyone what that means? Yeah, so essentially you can think of it as one approach for RNA targeted drug discovery. And so essentially we're using um, uh, nucleotide sequences to uh, target the sense strand. Um, so that's why they're called antisense. And so we have a couple of different mechanisms this can work by to decrease RNA expression, to reduce um, protein production, or to increase translation, to increase protein production. Um, but the idea is that we're actually targeting the RNA um, you know, to help with disease. Yeah. So let's shift a little bit, okay. because I can imagine doing this work, technology is so important. And you're here at the Illumina Genomics Forum where we've made some really big announcements. Tell me some of your first impressions about the announcements that were made this week. And 
really in particular, how does this impact the work that you're doing? Yeah, amazing question. So I have the pleasure to work with Ali um, Crawford and her team and Ryan Tuff. Um, they contribute already to Enlorum. When um, Stan first um, began Enlorum, he really wanted to make sure infrastructure, processes, everything for quality and industrialization were in place so that we knew by the time we had a therapy for a patient, they would be ready to be dosed. And so that includes everything from the whole genome sequencing at the outset. So for our patients, we're creating actually an individualized therapy for each one of our patients because their mutations are so rare. Um, and so this involves actually having long read whole genome sequencing. And so it was pretty spectacular that ASO technology is coming to this place. And then Illumina technology, right, is coming to this place where they're able to provide like the long read sequencing and greater accessibility and, and speed and that. So we always think about our patients every day. So um, as soon as someone applies, they're, they're, they've already been through maybe like a seven, eight year diagnostic journey. And so we feel this real urgency to get to our patients faster and to help them devise a therapy faster. And so um, the whole genome sequencing allows us to identify all of the heterozygous SNPs in that individual patient that we would be able to target so that we are only um, influencing the expression of the pathogenic allele. Wow. So yeah, so that step is absolutely critical and our partners at Illuma have been just amazing. And so when I saw the new product launch, I was like <laughs> over the moon. So I, I couldn't believe um, yeah, how much improvement they've, they've made in, in just such a short time with their incredible scientific team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so super rare, AKA yes. nano rare. Yes. <laughs> Have you had a chance to meet any of the patients that you're mm -hmm. working so hard to? Yes we get the opportunity to meet them. So many patients have come by to our office. We get to show them around, show them the lab, and kind of talk with them about their experiences. Um, we just had um, a patient family come by recently and show us a documentary that oh, they'd wow. spent, yeah, over nine years working on. Wow. It was so incredible. And so we got to around watch the documentary. Diagnosis? Yeah, so wow. it was their diagnostic journey and then um, three other uh, families' diagnostic journeys. So it was absolutely spectacular just to have that opportunity to, to chat with um, the family and, and hear about their experiences and hear how can we do better? You know, what can we do to support you? That's amazing. So yeah. you kind of lead me into my, my last question. Yeah. I mean, you guys are already doing amazing work. Oh, thank it, you. And it's so inspiring because I'm pretty sure a lot of these patients feel unheard, yes. feel unseen, That's feel right. like they don't have answers and you're giving them answers. Yes. yes. So what does the future look like at Enlorum? Yeah, so we're already realizing that there's so many more nano rare patients than we, we ever thought. And so as we start to bring hope and even potential therapies for um, families and, and patients, then we know that more of them will find in Lorem as well. So um, we're thinking more and more about increasing our capacity, improving efficiency for drug discovery, like really establishing the infrastructure needed um, to scale up for all the patients that um, we think will hopefully be able to treat in, in the future. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I wonder as you scale up with those mm -hmm. nano-rare patients, be nano rare, you know, I like know, at that's what exactly point? Like, <laughs> yeah, with so much um, genomic screening that's going on, right? And, you know, Illumina providing greater accessibility, you know, faster processing, um, cheaper pricing, right? So we're going to find more and more patients, and we know that's going to happen. After a seven to eight year diagnostic journey, they come to us after being referred by a physician who um, they found did a whole exome sequencing so we can identify path pathogenic mutation, but often then there's still no therapies, right? So then they feel, you know, helpless and hopeless once again. And so we try to create a community um, when anyone um, comes to Enlorum or our website. We've created a patient empowerment program, which helps anyone who comes there to really understand more just about the drug discovery process and, you know, what it's like to you know, maybe deal with like watching other people's um, uh, journeys, you know, what it's like and their new normal. Because mm. uh, we really want to provide this community and help um, 
for anyone who um, who needs it. Wow. Yeah. So one thing that I'm taking away from this interview is mm-hmm. that in Lorem is a place for hope. Yes. And it's very inspiring to hear the work that you and the team are doing and bringing to light these nano rare patients. Yeah. And I'm just so glad that you're doing the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you much. so much for yeah. sharing your story and telling us everything that you work on. Thank you. It was great to chat with you.